what are you most afraid of? I asked a few of us here uh, since last week this question. What are you most afraid of? I asked my wife. Uh, the first thing that came to her mind was uh, burglars. Because back in the Philippines, we were burglarized. I and mean, there was maybe two or three times. But there was one time when the burglars came to our house and we were in our bedroom sleeping like six men came in and uh, emptied our house from spoon and fork, even my old rubber shoes. <laughs> they took away just the piano that they left. It's too heavy. Um, uh, my son, I was talking to my son this morning and asked the same question and David said, to lose a loved one, that's what I fear. I asked others, uh, someone said uh, terrorism. I can understand because we just heard of the story that happened in New Zealand. You know, we, we used to call worship places like this place of worship as sanctuaries. A place where people can come and feel safe. But it's not anymore. That has changed and you always have this fear that somebody may come and create this terror. Somebody said a serious illness like stage four. Lose health, lose a job. I heard those. Uh, this last Thursday, I went to a doctor, uh, ear doctor, and of course he sent me to this uh, audiogram to test the ears. And so after a test, the doctor said to me, you have definitely have hearing loss. I got scared because uh, when, when my father became like in 70, he became, he, his hearing became less and less until to such a point where he became deaf. So that scared me. I, you know, will it come to me? Will I become deaf? I was talking to Rina Lee, who is a professional sign language lady, and she said, this thing about conducting a class on sign language, and I volunteered to be her first student. So that when that time comes, I know how to sign, right? So thank you. Now Psalms 27, the one that was read to us, uh, verses 1 and up to 14, I don't have to read it now, but basically it says there, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my stronghold. Psalms 27, you can go there. And he said, whom shall I fear? Why should I be afraid? I mean, commentaries, I was reading them, and, and they said that David wrote these scriptures reflecting on his past experiences. And then towards the latter part of Psalms 27, David was praying. I mean, there was a point in Psalms 27 where David was very sure and very clear. He seems to have no fear at all because he said, The Lord is my light. He is my salvation. He is my strength. Why should I be afraid? But then when we continue reading the other verses, Lord, please, he was asking God, begging him, you know. So kind of moving from this, this confidence of God as being there, but sometimes wavering and wondering. It's kind of similar to our own journey as Christians, isn't it? There are times when we feel strong and like we can vanquish anything, but there are times when we have doubts and we have fears. So David there was going through that. He's reflecting to the, this story. So the writer here is telling us, Psalms 27, David was telling us that we should move from fear to faith. That's what he's saying. And the context, if we go to the story uh, in 1 Samuel 17, verses 1 to 11, at least so you will understand. Of course you know the story, but we better understand why David is saying this. This is the story of David and Goliath. And of course, even after this confrontation with Goliath, it was not over. King Saul was even after him. You know, he had enemies from within and also without, you know, even his family. But let's all go and read this. Now the Philistines gathered their four forces for war and assembled at Soko in Judah. 
You know, I met somebody when I first came to Ambassador College, he thought I came from the land of the Philistines. I said, Philippines, not Philistines. You know, I'm a Filipino, not a Philistine. But anyways, <laughs> they pitched camp at F.S. Daman between Soko and Azeka. Verse 2, Saul and the Israelites assembled and camped in the valley of Elah and drew up their battle line to meet the Philistines. Verse 3, the Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another with a valley between them. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. So some commentary says probably a nine-footer, you know, kind of a tall man. It'll make a good NBA basketball center, you know, but anyway. Let's go on to verse uh, 5. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor on, of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. Just showing how big this guy is. He's heavy. Verse 6, on his legs he wore a bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. Verse 7, his spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron pointed uh, point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. So he's, he has even a shield bearer. Verse 9. Eight. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and you are not? Are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. Verse 9. And if he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome in him, overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, this day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. Verse 11 and 12. And on hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. You know, before this happened, I'm sure before the Philistines, they were calm. Everything was peaceful. There's the beautiful mountains, the greenery. The butterflies flying, you know, it's all nice and beautiful. But that got upset when something happened, when this Goliath came into the picture. Now, David was the son of Ephrathite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judah. And Jesse had eight sons in Saul's time. He was very old. So let's jump to verse 24 to 26 to, to move on with the story. Verses 24 to 26. So whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. So they were afraid because of this Goliath, this scary guy. Verse 25. Now the Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will accept his family from taxes in Israel. Everybody wants to be accepted from tax, you know, <laughs> even at that time. You know, verse, let's go jump to verse 45. Verse 45 to 47. And David said to the Philistine, You come against me with a sword and spear and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Verse 46. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And finally, verse 47, And all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. So that's the background. And then he vanquished Goliath. And everybody rejoiced. And Saul was so surprised. And all the others so was say, who is this young man? Why? You know, he was asking this question. And, and who is his father? Where did he come from? They're, they're wondering, oh, who is this person? Fear, in my opinion, is one of the most difficult aspect of human life, our human experience when we have fear. 
I, I get scared of things like the burglars. We close the door, we, I push on you know, the heavy stuff, and while they were getting our things from the house, scary. I'm sure you do. Well, all of you have experienced, you know, if you walk out down the street and meet a wild lion, you know, or a crazy peacock, <laughs> you get scared, you know? It's only human for us, it's only human to respond to something dangerous. It's only human to respond in fear. I think God put that also in us so that we can be safe. But it's one thing for us to feel fear, yet another thing for us to live in fear. The problem is when we often let fear to occupy our minds and our lives. And part of the problem with fear is what it does to us. When this fear becomes uncontrollable, what it does to us when we give fear so much power over us. That's the problem. We, we, so we try because when fear comes, it's like a fog that comes so thickly and we cannot see beyond. You know, we get blind and we, we don't see the very Savior that we have. And when we cling on to whatever we think is valuable, we, we have this fear and we lose perspective and fear can bring out the worst of us. And that, that's, that can happen. It brought the worst of soul, the worst of the Israelites, where they have forgotten that they have a deliverer. So the overcoming of fear in, here in Psalms 27 is being proclaimed here. King David wants to show us the, the right solution to fear. The only solution to fear in verse 1, if you go to Psalms 27 verse 1, is not our strength. It's not spears and our own selves and our wisdom. It's not anything, not our money, our education, not our wisdom, not drugs or alcohol when problems come, but the Lord. For us, we know that the Lord is Jesus. So, in a way, when we look at the story of David, he's a type of Jesus. A lot of the things mentioned in the Old Testament, it says that these things were written for us to learn and to know that they whisper the name of Jesus. Now, David was some kind of a type of Jesus because in this example, he faced all kinds of fear. When almost everyone in the country in Israel we were afraid, they were cowering in fear, their knees were shaking, they were afraid. David was, at that time, the only one who rose to the occasion. He faced this Goliath-sized fear. Later on, David had enemies, even, outside and inside, who would betray him. It's almost like the life of Jesus, where even the ones inside his circle the ones that he loved would run away and somebody would betray him. So if not controlled, fear can become an enemy. Fear is something the enemy can grow in us, in our hearts. And when fear seizes our heart, then it empties the inside. It weakens our strength. It can break us down. It can discourage us to while wanting to quit. It abandons faith and runs away and gets confused. And for some, they may even curse God because of fear. Let's go to Psalms 27, uh, verse uh, 2. Psalms 27, verse 2. It says, When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my Foes who will stumble. Here it talks about devouring me. I mean, other translation says that it's like my flesh is being eaten. That's, you know, when you have these fears, you get weak and tired. It's like your flesh, somebody's knowing the flesh. And you're, you know, my wife being a nurse tells me sometimes she visits this patient. Wasn't it? You told me about flesh eating bacteria. I mean, Maybe that's not a good thing for servants, right? But it's, it's scary and ugly, and this thing spreads, and even antibiotics are, you know, difficult. They have difficulty trying to cure it. 
but that's what is being described here. It's, it weakens you in verse 2. And, and, you know, let's go back to the, the verse 1. It says, the Lord is my light. That's what David's saying. Now for us, when we say the, light, the Lord is my light, from our 2019 perspective, we think of uh, oh, this light and the sun. I mean, it's good. There are two kinds of light. You know, During the day, we have the sun. At night, we have the moon. But David, his own. Think about you in David's sandals, David's shoes. The experiences he had in darkness. He, he was running away many times. He was running away from Saul. And where did he live? Where did he stay? In caves. Have you been to a cave? I, I've been to a cave and they give you a tour. And then once you're inside the cave, somebody turns off the light. I remember being there and I got so scared because I put my fingers right. I cannot see anything. You know, that's how dark it is. And when David said, the Lord is my light, actually, you know, during that time, they didn't have any flashlight. They had no lantern. Can you show a picture? I put a picture here of what light they had. That's it. It's made of clay. It has one wick and one flame. I mean, that's what they had. So when David says, the Lord is my light, he is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. But, you know, if it is so dark, he has this lamp. This, they didn't have any flashlight. I mean, now we have our own cell phone, right? We can just... <laughs> and it, this becomes a plus light. Uh, but that what they, that's what they have. And, and this light can only brighten a few feet. That's what they had. It's not like bright light. And for David, he was already saying, the Lord is my light. Is my... And he was already contented because this light at least gives him the ability to see a few feet away and be able to walk. Through this, he's not able to see distance, great distance, you know. But he had faith. He had faith that if he is here, he can see this light. And that is so dark out there. But if he continues to walk, then it will become bright. Wherever he goes, as long as he is holding the lamp, the light, he is okay. Because it shines and brightens. So, in a way, he's saying here is, do not be afraid of tomorrow. Do not be afraid of what may be a few feet away or a few meters away. Do not be afraid of the future. As long as you have the Lord, the light, He is there with you. He will brighten up the path. He is a light unto my feet. That's what it says. It's a scary thing to be in the dark. Uh, when we were in, in the Philippine summer camp with my wife and our baby then was day uh, not day. Ben, when you have so many kids, sometimes you forget their names. <laughs> ben. Anyway, I remember we were there you know, in the dorm, and then uh, there was a brownout, and there was nothing. There's no moon, no brownout at night, and it, I opened my eyes, and, and I could not see anything. You know, nothing. And then our son, two-year-old Ben, woke up. And to hear the fear and the cry, the terrifying cry of, of our child shouting, I have no eyes. I have no eyes. I mean, you know, in a, in a crooked way of English, you know. I have no eyes. He, was, he, was, he thought he was blind. Could you imagine that two-year-old thing? I am blind in his mind. And it was, you know, oh, that was horrifying to hear him say, I have no, you know, good thing I quickly grab hold of the, my flashlight. You know, it's a common thing to have brownouts. So I have a flashlight and turn it on. And he was so happy, you know, two-year-old. But it's scary. That's why, you know, in the cave, I can understand David saying, the Lord is my light, you know, in darkness. Because darkness, you know, spiritual darkness is everywhere. For us, problems could be also darkness. You know, that happens as we walk this life. Some of us feel we're in darkness when we have this terrible illness. We are in darkness when we're going through some serious problems in life. We have darkness when we are unemployed and we have financial issues um, but don't fear David is saying here for us yeah we feel fear but we don't live in fear when we look at the Bible itself the Bible the gospel Psalms 27 Jesus Christ the church all are trying to to shout and cry against fear against fear in the lives of human beings. 365, was it 365 times it says that 
it says, do not be afraid. So fear is something that is, that God is telling us, be careful that it doesn't control you. We all come face to face with fear. It's like when you are seized with that fear, it's like fear whispering to you. <coughs> hey, we are all by ourselves now. Let me tell you, Burmi, what's happening. Man, woman, you are in trouble. You are alone. Nobody cares about you. Come on, look at yourself. You are sick. You're jobless. You cannot get away from this addiction. Ah, oh, there's so much crime. There's so much terrorism. There is calamity. You can die anytime. So fear becomes a disease that can blind us from seeing that one true solution. So Psalms 27, verse 3 to 6. Let's go to Psalms 27, 3 to 6. David here, you know, tells us something. Psalms 27, verses 3 and 6. Though an army besieges me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord. I mean, this is really, uh, that to me is a anchoring, really good scripture. One thing I ask from the Lord. I mean, if I ask you, if I, right now, if I ask myself, what is one thing that you desire from God? What is that? And David, here's his answer. He said, one thing I ask from the Lord. This only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. That's Dave, David says that, that's it. That's what I desire. There's something about being with God that, that solves this problem of fear when we are with him. I mean, I, I remember growing up when I was a little boy when there's a strong lightning and thunder. The first thing I grab is my, my dad's legs, you know. <laughs> Somehow, holding, grab hold of my father's legs give me the sense of safety, you know. I remember something we, we did with Ben. I think it was Ben again. Uh, the horror in his face when we were in a mall. And sometimes the children, they would just want to run away. And so we wanted to teach him a lesson. So my wife... It was her idea, not mine. Why <laughs> I said, let's hide. Let's hide from Ben. I said, really? And I kind of followed her, you know. <laughs> so we hid ourselves. And there was Ben just looking around and walking, you know, happy until he realized we could not be seen. And we were there hiding behind his clothes. <laughs> my wife can have this idea anyway. and then seeing him shout you know the, the horror so mama that daddy was mama I was scared you know and you know seeing him so scared we chop out and say we're here we're here so we wanted to teach him a lesson but I can understand how how much we like children of God when we are so far away and we don't really see God that's scary that's a scary thought Another dreadful thing is not just seeing, you know, fear in a child, but in, even in older people. I, you know, back in the Philippines, I was 32 years old as a pastor, and face to face with another 32-year-old member who has a stage four cancer behind his two eyes. The eyes are popping out, and I was young and. I remember him crying right there in front of me. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And, and the whole family was sitting there and everybody was scared. And at that, you know, I didn't even know what words I said at the time. I was, I was young. But David here gives us a solution. How do we know the solution to fear? What is the antidote to this poison called fear? We know. You know the Bible tells us. Not what is the solution, not really what is the antidote, but who? That is the question. Who is the solution? Because that's what David said, said in Psalms 27, the Lord. It's a who, not a what, not a how, but it's a who. And we know who he is. He's the one who overcame fear. 
He is the one who, who was nailed to the cross. And he's the one who nailed fear itself and committed fear into extinction when we truly understand who Jesus is. He's the one who shouts the victory for, the, for humans. The one who redeemed us from the fear of death and from death itself. Jesus Christ, the crucified, the resurrected, the living one. That's Jesus. Remember the story when he was with the disciples, this Jesus? And they were in the boat, and the boat was being tossed to and fro like a toy, and the sky was dark, and there was thunder, and then this the sailors in the boat suddenly were seized with this fear. Fear was in the boat. And they got so scared because they let fear to manage them until they shouted. And suddenly, of course, they saw Jesus there. Jesus Christ is in the boat. That is the problem with fear. For us who have received and believed, like right what Mike was saying, believe God, believe in Him, Jesus is in the boat. But fear blinds us, and we think He is not in the boat, and so we cry. But Jesus in the, is in the boat, and no sooner the storm stopped, the waves subside, the sea is calm, Jesus in the boat, is in the boat. So, in a way, my friends, you and I, all of us here, are alone on that voyage. Do we embrace fear or do we embrace Jesus? In a way, there is Goliath in our lives and there is Saul who wants to harm us. Can we say as David said, who are these to defy the Lord God Almighty? It's the same message for you and I. Jesus Christ is in the boat. Jesus Christ is here. He is our light. He is our salvation. He is our strength. Saul was asking, who is this young man? Who is his father? And the disciples were asking after that miracle and the storm. The disciples said, who is this person? That, that even the winds and the waves obey him. My friends, it is no other than what David is saying is, the Lord Jesus. He is the one. It is Jesus the Christ. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for lifting Lord us to us and for us to be able to see that the only real solution to all our worries and problems, Lord, and to fear is that we go and seek Jesus to be in his presence. Lord, to know that he is our light that He is, Lord, our salvation and our strength. In His name we pray. Amen.